But this is the segment where we get to engage with Baba as a, as a community and start to ask those poignant questions. Um, we can only accept one question at a time. We want to get through to as much people as possible. Um, Baba, if you will, in your supreme wisdom to keep the answers as short as possible so we can get as much in as, as we can. Um, Lek, everyone at mute until it's your turn, please. Um, Lekia, um, if hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. Can you unmute yourself, please, and um, ask your question, please? Hello, thank you. Yes, it's Lekia. Um, the question I wanted to ask is actually something to do with hair, because I am someone that um, promotes um, celebration of um, African textured hair. And Baba mentioned um, the idea of it's only members of your family that were allowed to do your hair. And I know in some parts of Nigeria as well, there's um, Yoruba, I think, and also Igbo, which I'm more familiar with. They, there were special people who were allowed to do people's hair. So, you know, seeing the, the, the power of hair and the importance of hair, would you, you know, what do you think about the hair practices of today, the kind of things that we do to our hair? Um, whether it's the using of chemicals to change our hair texture or whether it's the buying of, um, you know, other people's hair to use on our hair. Also, knowing that in African society, we did use other fibres sometimes on our hair. But, you know, today where we see, you know, um, the majority of African women, and I, and I say that with confidence, that it is majority of Af African women or women of African descent wearing hair from Korea, uh, India, China, and all of that. Do, do you think that it affects our energy or spiritual energy? You know, does, does it affect us in any way? That, that spiritually, not physically, because I know it affects us physically. Thank you very much, Lekia. Um, anyone who knows me know that I speak strongly against the, the, the introduction of um, alien material into your natural body. And especially when it concerns your sacred spot, which is your head. Your head in Yoruba word here, we call it Ori. And Ori seems to be the equivalent of your unseen self, your old essence, your energy. Now, this is the physical representation of that your unseen energy. And the, the highest and the most potent right we do in African spirituality is to appease this place, which is called the head. Because we believe that if things are going right for you, it's because your head is in tune. If things are going wrong for you, it's because you need to actually troubleshoot it. If you take a wrong decision and all that, it's because of this. Now, the, the, more, limit, the more limitation you put on the people that approach this place, the more of their energy you actually put on. Of course, we know that not everyone carries a positive energy. So in, the, in those days, um, members of family, there is really, you can also check among the African, uh, Black, uh, uh, um, African American community, you realize that there's really a family lineage without one person who knows how to make air in that family lineage. It seems like a tradition. It, is, it was not supposed to be something we see as a gift in these days. It was part of the life skill in those days, both male and female. Both male, because they, they want to try as much as possible to limit the DNA, the, the energy of people that touches your head into the members of that family. At least they are at a point in time trustworthy. That is the reason why in African marriage from West Africa here, on the day of the wedding, there is a rite they do on that day. It is a rite, not a ceremony. They do a rite whereby the woman put a scarf or egg on the man, and the man put a scarf on the woman. That is a public approval for both of them that you two can now touch each other's head as from today. So the wife make the man's hair, 
the, the man also make, it's not being romantic, it is a life skill. Now, when we go as far as Indian to go and be importing air that was cut down, dedicated to their idol and put it on our head, we go as far as Peru to bring Peruvian air and all of those things. Naturally, do you think we are still normal? Now, there is a reason why African air defy gravity. They call it Afro. The way it stands, the formation of the universe on your air, the circle that represents the sun. There is a reason why you are like that. And your air as an African person is the only kind of air in the entire universe that can serve also as an antenna. The more pure you leave it, the more sensitive you are to nature. It may not be something you see tangibly or you can quantify, but you know you feel different. Compare the time you go to Baba every time or you go to Air Salon every time and the time you leave your air, you allow them to form or you allow someone or you make it yourself. Consider yourself. Sometimes you may not see a tangible quantification about it, but something is different within you. Very different within you. And that's the reason why for those who are really practicing spirituality and they, they don't want to keep their air, they would rather just keep scraping it themselves. That's something you can do by yourself. Let me take you back to, sorry, Joe, I'm going to round up now. Let me take you back to the typical African society. Actually, it was the women that scrape their air and the men make their air. Are you getting my point? So when you say, okay, it's a new thing on, in town, they said, I'm an African. Don't try to prove to us you're an African woman by scraping your hair. That's what an African woman does. It is not a trend. Stop making it look like a vogue. That is who you are. That is natural. You are not a bad boy by plating your hair as a man or leaving your dreadlock down. The ancient Egyptian <laughs> will be able to tell you this. The, the illustration you see them, uh, wig and all of those things, they will let you know. <coughs> reason why it was when the Ptolemies and the rest invaded the, the Egypt and then name it after themselves and they want to look like our Pharaoh, like our real black men who used to keep their dreads that they begin to wear wig. That wig that you see them typically wear. That's how our hair form naturally. That's how our hair form naturally. So I think I'm going to stop here so that um, Thank you, Baba. Nobody else can talk. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. I appreciate that. Thank you for that question, Lakia. Very powerful. Um, yes, Roland, uh, what is your question, sir? Yeah, hi there. Yeah, well, it's, my question is sort of slightly a, a point as well. But I just wanted to ask uh, uh, Baba Lawa, um, do you accept it as a justifiable reason that uh, certain Nigerians want to leave Nigeria because the standard of living in Nigeria, as far as I have heard from people directly, people that I have met, people that I speak to all the time, is that it, it, it is really terrible on a number of very basic fronts. Um, healthcare, um, living accommodation, education, being able to afford, some people have struggled in being able to afford one meal a day. Um, and many problems, uh, pro uh, social problems, problems of rituals. Sometimes you have anti-gay problems, et cetera, et cetera. But do you accept all of those problems are uh, uh, justifiable reasons why certain, and I say specifically Nigerians, want to leave Nigeria and come to the West? I would agree with you that there, those problems are in existence in our society, in all African nations not only in Nigeria. But I will not agree with you that it's the justifiable reason to leave Africa. For who? The Europeans make Africa un unlivable for Africans so that they can come to their land, come to America, come to this, come to that, and keep turning a blind eye to where the main wealth and the source of life is, which is Africa here. Now, how do they do that? They do that in collaboration with our leaders, our corrupt government leaders. Everything we go through in Africa is a man-made chaos. It's an artificial chaos. But what I'm saying is that my house is on fire. Do you think the solution is going to live with Joseph? No, I'm going to quench the fire. I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to go back living there. Robbers came to attack me in my home. 
do you think the solution is for me to run away from them? I'm going to reinforce my security. The reason why bad leadership and corrupt system is becoming a monumental implementation in Africa here, all African nation, is because the Africans who know what is right have run away. And see, a powerful man will not allow you to take away what belongs to him just by you staying on the internet and creating hashtag. You have to face them. People have died in this war. People will still die in this war. I would say this respectfully for those who left Nigeria. I would have left you, but I choose to stay. And in this Nigeria of today, I can afford three square meal a day. I can wear any kind of clothes I want to wear, apart from the fact that I won't wear designer and my black black save me money. I live in my own house. As a matter of fact, I stopped working for a firm, uh, anything called firm, years ago. You know what I did, Roland? I went to the very place that they have demonized, my village. Because there is a word going around the streets of Nigeria and every part of Africa, whenever they say your village people, they mean it for bad. I went back to the village people and I said, there is wealth here, I will create it. So what I did was to start farming on a large scale. I did computer science in school. I did aviation after school. I've gone so many degrees. I could have gone to Europe and start mopping floor and tending to a white one who is, who is, who is defecating on the bed. But I said, there must be something here that someone is trying to distract me from. So I stayed. I'm not saying everybody have the balls to stay. They are kidnapping people in Africa every single day, not only in Nigeria, but I've not been kidnapped yet. Last, uh, last festival we had in, Ju in July, a lot of people were skeptical. They don't want to come to Nigeria. Sorry, Joe. And I told them, I'm in Nigeria, I'm here. A lot of them came to Nigeria. They had fun and they went back. Nothing happened. Roland, do you know they kill people every day in America? People who are worth billions, artists, musicians but you will see it in the media. Why should they blow our own inconveniences and our own challenges out of proportion? And we choose for the media to control our thinking. And then we face nothing, but we allow fear to go. I know an average Nigerian cannot afford a dollar per day to eat, but who is going to fight for the right of that Nigerian? Is it you people in our abroad? Let me tell you something, we don't take you seriously, no matter how much movement you try to create in abroad. You are talking to us over YouTube and internet. You are not here with us. You think we are taking, we are just giving you viewership. As a matter of fact, we are giving you more money to be able to survive so that you can place ad on your YouTube and all that. But when it comes to the real deal, we don't take you seriously. Anyone who said, I'm going to lead the protest to change Africa and have double citizenship, we don't take them seriously. That's a quote, unwritten code. You want to fight for this? Come to Africa and live there. What did I do? I said, if I have two plates of rice, I will give an African child one. If I have three rooms in my house, I will avail one to an African child. So we started several humanitarian organizations. We are fending food for these people. We can't feed all Africans, but the ones we are feeding, we are sending them to school. We are ensuring we change the narratives. I have a lot of people who live abroad also who send their tokens. They refuse to give to you people work for money. You pay tax to Caucasian. You still give money to the charity of a Caucasian who have an allocation in his government budget. African children don't have allocation for those who are homeless in African budget. You give your money to the people. How do we settle the matter? When you keep giving to the charity abroad who already have help there, you keep giving to the fostering program abroad who will take your children away from you. But look at it, black child like you and I are living under the bridge and we are not helping them. And we want Africa to be better. Maybe the one who could be the one that will turn around Africa as starved to death. We are all our hands in that blood because we refuse to, you know, to take in of it. I wish I could respond. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you for that. But it's an um, important question. And thank you for that deep um, um, answer. 
Thank you for that question, Roland. Um, Mr. Agu, um, do you want to let your question? I think you got your hand up, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Baba, Baba Yubu. Y Yoba. Yeah, thanks a lot. I've been listening to your stuff on YouTube. I've been following this stuff on Centre Pan African, and everything you say is good and increasing. Um, I want to say, you can give you respect for that as well and your effort. Yeah, coming home to Africa is has to be an aim from ancestors or from you or uh, wherever the goal is. That's that's my goal. But what I want to ask you which is not whitewashing, but brainwashing with European values, your thoughts, um, the values that we have here, um, which probably which definitely impedes. Um, my experiences, unconsciousness, not willing, no, not intention, all these kind of things is, is things I've picked up from, from these, these people here and, um, and their institutions. I just want to get your thoughts on, their, on, on, on brainwashing. When you speak and you speak Afri African spirituality and culture, it increases. So I just want to get your thoughts on the brainwashing and uh, the whitewashing of values and uh, yeah yeah that's it all right thank you um i think i'm getting used to the way you guys talk in that of britain <laughs> really hit the note you're asking for my opinion on the brainwashing uh is he the brainwashing of african people by the you know caucasian right is that what you're trying to ask I think I believe yes. yes. Yeah, that, yeah, that's all what I'm right. asking. And even the right. values, right. even the, 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 the what values. are they? Okay. That, that, right. Even the points. That, that. All right. So, all right. Thank you. Uh, sorry. I, I, yeah. Now that's make, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that's the that's the question. It's just at least right. give so, us some right. tips on how to undo that as well. Yeah. Basically, um, if it is free, if it is a free thing from a Caucasian. It is a Trojan horse. You need to be careful. Always careful. If everyone was what it used to be, or what they say it is, they will not introduce you to it. If the name of Jesus can do miracles and help, they will not let you know about it. We've seen so many things that we know can change our lives for better. They refuse us access to it. I want to ask you today, have you ever bothered to wonder why people create nuclear weapon? The war of how many people I can destroy if you mess with me is the reason why people create Africa uh, nuclear weapon. How many African nations have nuclear weapons? So we are like a lab rat to them. They can do and undo with us. They will not allow us to have it. How many African nations have their satellites in the orbit? Do you know that all of our communication is routed through uh, Israel? Because we will not be able to have it. Those are things that matter to humanity and life. And those are things that they refuse to let you have. However, should I say they are smart? Yes, they are. Because if you have ever, if you know the history of the Trojan horse, it's always called shiny. Look at what they painted to you. An average African moving out of Africa really did not know that the ash weather reality is there. That sometimes you can even be jobless in the UK or America or wherever. The stigmatization. Let's say something that happened in, uh, in Afghanistan recently. And the way it seems as if that thing didn't happen anymore. What America did in Afghanistan, how they destroy, destabilize, mess up that particular nation and come to tell you that they are lifting people out of Afghanistan. When the people they actually lifting are their own people and those who, lean, who linked intel to them, not an average Afghanistan. The brainwashing did not start today using this 
inferior weapon. It started in the days of religion. The days of religion. An average African is religious. And so they decided to use that weapon against us. So when somebody hurts your feelings, you say you leave it for God. God? Americans don't leave the Arabians to God, to judge. They judge them by themselves. Israeli would you follow their God. Don't leave uh, Palestinians to go to judge. They will judge them with bombs. They will judge them with weapons. Now, if we are talking about defense, do we even produce even the smallest gun in Africa? But we keep receiving aid, aid upon aid. And then we feel these people are nice. An average African want to be like a white person. See, I even prefer my, my life with a white person is so pure, so this, so that. I call it a home. Ojo Chaba, Kairu, Iru, Inu, Erua, Baje. The meaning of that is that the day they decide to count the members of the family, that's the day you will be sad if you are a slave in that household. No matter how much, if they give back to you there, as long as you are not complying with that eugenic, eugenic, you know, eugenic agenda that they were pushing, pushing it under the, the Hitler, pushing it under the KKK and the rest. As long as you don't meet up with that eugenic standard, you are still a second-class citizen. You are an afterthought to them. But look at the way they have weaponized the media. Do you know you can't speak your truth? There are some things you talk about. Um, what's the name of this? Uh, 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 I've forgotten the name of this African man on Facebook and they will flag you down. So many truths on Africa, history of Africa, you put it on their, on, their, on their platform, they will flag you down. And if we are having this kind of discussion, I tell you for truth, if we're having this kind of discussion on YouTube, somehow it will not trend. Somehow the algorithm will flag us down. Somehow, people will not be able to assess it. But these are the people we are willing to die for. An African living in Africa, when he sees a person with white skin, even if the guy is an homeless, homeless drug addict in his nation, an average African will treat this person like king, like prince, like princess, because of skin. Why? When you were growing up, you were told that angels are white, devils are black like you. So you judge by color, not by intention. There's a lot more we can talk about. The weapon of CNN, the weapon of Fox News and all that. Unfortunately for you Africans, you would rather listen to that kind of news outlet than the news outlet of things that, of our people that originate from here, Africa, here. Who tells you the truth? Who takes you to the site of what is happening? So they want to make a documentary about your people and they have to make it about a child that is looking dirty. Actually, I don't know where they always get that their fly. There's always this fly that is always coming around the camera at that time. I think that fly is a robot. There must be a fly. There must be something stinking, something smelling, something. If you also want to make movie, the other day we were talking about the review of the other the fall, one recent movie released on this thing. And we're talking about how nonsensic the movie is. And somebody was saying, what is the essence of going to rob a bank? I said, if it is a all black movie and a white is producing it in Hollywood, a black man must be a thug, a black man must be a robber, a black man must be a rogue. That is how they use us. That is how the only reason why they will fund our movie in Hollywood. So the brainwashing cut across, and it is subtle. To the animation that your children watch, do you sit down with them to watch this animation? Do you sit down to watch this animation with them? Try and sit down and watch the animation with them and see how they were damaged from little before they grew up. So they have nothing to do when they grow up. They, are, they, they have been adulterated. That's what they call adults, adulterated, messed up from little. I'm going to stop there. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Baba, for answering that question. Another question is, um, how can the African diaspora community help males to become more conscious of their African energy? 
That's meals. The question, but yes. Um, how can the African diaspora and community us abroad help the men to be more conscious of their African energy, more males specifically, so it could be young boys and older men to become more conscious of their African energy. I guess we want to understand that what kind of information or vibration should we be putting the black boys and men on so they can be conscious enough to actually have the right kind of impact on society. A child that does not know his history will not know his essence. How much of African history do African men even know? For it is those who know the history and the role of women in those history that are able to live with mutual respect with those women. Now, let me go quickly to the women. What kind of a father are you choosing for your children? Your, your children can't choose their parent. It is the woman who chooses the father for her children. It is the man who chooses the mother for his children. What sort of a male figure are you opening your leg up for? Because the moment the emotion of love gets in this place, people begin to behave like some erratic something. They cannot think straight anymore. Is this a man of value? Who knows himself? A certain man reached out to me. You know, the children of our ancestors that were taking slavery, and he was crying. He was crying not because he did something wrong. He said, I cry because I got to know you late. And I said, you can bounce up. And he said, no. He said, my cry is from the regret that I did not know who I am before bringing children into this world. So I can't really tell them this is who they are or give them an identity. They will get lost in this stream of weaponization or indoctrination of the white. Now, how much of home do you touch base with? Because when you touch base with home within yourself, you realize that the toxic masculinity that we display amongst ourselves today and the over weakness that we try to be, you know, that we display today is never the intention of the ancestors. That was not the way our ancestors lived. And we need to start having support groups. Support groups are not meant only for people who are struggling with depression or mental issue. We cannot support group for these kind of things. Let people share their reality. Those who are emotionally balanced and those who are having a trough, they should also share it. We should prefer solution to our problem in an African way by Africans, void of any form of indoctrination, religion, and the stain of what is prevalent in the society where we are. We should take the bull by the arm. And when we are going to this support group also, if it is possible, let's take our sons along because they say charity begins at all. A boy child who have an absent father may finally be cool with being absent from the life of his children also. And we have a lot of it today. I was posting a question on my platform yesterday. I said, do you think it's becoming a cancerous culture the vogue and the trend of baby mama and baby dada. Because I hear people take pride in it. You know, I'm a single mother of three. I raised my children alone from teenage I was this. I don't need no man. I'm not saying situation cannot put you in that particular, but is that something normal? Is it normal? A child who is meant to get balancing male and female presence in their life, and you choose to put only the female presence in their life. How balanced will they be? How confident will they be to face the future? And I think we should talk to our men also. Controlling your sexuality is the beginning of creating a better society. You can't sleep with all women out there. Not even because of the disease or because of the woman, but because of the children that will replace you. You have to be intentional with your spam and your erection. You have to be intentional with people who sees your nakedness. Stop saying man's nakedness does not worth any value. It worth more than the value.
put some value on yourself, put something on yourself. You two are valuable. You are, you are masculine, you are feminine also. You are beautiful, you are handsome. You are, you, are, you are a collaborator to continuity of the community of your ancestors. Put some respect on this body. Not everything. Woo, woo, woo. You turn yourself to a gas station. Any car that comes, you just sell gas for them. Sell gas, sell gas, sell gas. For how long? Look at the society we are creating. Before we now start talking about the women, we need to be intentional about the family we want to raise, about the children. How will they think? Can they be proud of us? And we should also, look, sorry, I'm running up. We should also look at the parenting or fathering beyond biological fathering. A lot of you men out there, you have no business having a child of your own. Go and adopt a child that is homeless. Be a father to them. Let's keep mopping up these menaces from society because it is all those ones that don't have a home to stay, who to call a father, who to mentor them, that become the one that you can send to the battle and tell them that if they go and kill their fellow human being, they will receive self to do virgin in, uh, in, in heaven. That's how terrorism breed. And if we like it or not, most of those people were sent into to go and they recruit them from our land because we are absent in their lives. That's what I'm going to say about that. Thank you, thank you for that, um, Baba. Another question put from the chat is, and it's quite, and this is, and and this is pretty much a point and a question. But surely we do not have to be such slaves to our culture. On one hand, we have to have the mind of our own and not that of the oppressor. But the main question is, but can we not have a mind of our own in regards to our own culture? Or is it kind of like, are we following a system? Or can we have our own mind whilst practicing culture? Does it allow us the freedom of choice? Or is it only following divine leadership? The universe is not partisan. And nature is not kind to one person more than the other. You have a choice. This mind of your own was never taken away from you. You chose to stop using it. You can do have a mind of your own. But how many of us were raised with confidence in self? Were we not raised to say that, to wait for people to give us accolade before we can think we are best? When we go to school in those days and we come back and we say, mama, I'm the best in my class. Doesn't your mother say, shh, you can't praise yourself. Let other people praise you. When you do something good and all that, and you know you did it, when you say, I did this, don't, don't they tell you, shh, say all glory be to God. When we sing good music in Africa and it is worthy of listening, do we not think until they give us Grammy, is Grammy an African award? Until they give us Grammy, we don't think we have made it in life. That's why we brag about YouTube follower, internet follower and all that an account that they can seize or pull down at any time. Those mundane things became the subject or the foundation of our pride. Those are, those are nonsense stuff. Confidence in self is the one that will build the mind of your own. And to make it in life, you have to be abnormal. Normal people don't make it in life. You can't have a voice of your own if you're abnormal. Had I chosen to be a pastor like the rest of my friends, would you invite me here today? What is a pastor saying that you can't go on YouTube and hear? If I've told you to say, okay, in our family, we are Muslim, we are Christian, I'm going to follow the way of my, I'm not going to be here. And it comes with a cost. People will taunt you, they will persecute you, they will come after you for having a mind of your own. That is the definition of heresy and blasphemy. Heresy or blasphemy is defined as a man having a mind of his own away from the conventional reasoning and the way the society runs. And to make it really in life, to really give yourself the happiness you desire, you have to be a disruptor. You disrupt everything. You change the status quo. But look at us here today. The lead, we follow. The earth's mentality. Why do you think they choose the one that did not listen and call them the black goat? Because it's different. My mother could do it that way. This is how I want to do it. What works for me? What makes me happy? How do I face my death? On my deathbed, 
would I cry the tears of sorrow because I didn't do what I know I'm capable of just because of what people will say? Or I'm going to be filled with smile because every single thing I desire, everything I am convinced is right, I attempted it. So it starts with self-confidence. And until you come to the reality, when you wake up in the morning and you come to the reality that you are God, not a small God, not a big God. You are just a God. There is no other God except you. You are who you choose to be, who you choose, who you said you are. That you, it doesn't look like a conflict within you anymore when I say you are God. It doesn't look like I need to explain to you why you are God. Until you get to that point, you really can have a mind of your own. You will forever be dictated for. I will keep it simple there. Thank you, Baba, for that for that insightful question. I'm just trying to put some questions from the chat regarding our topic today. Um, well, let me look through, see if there's any questions coming in. I mean, well, yeah, so um, Baba, what's your thoughts about um, how the, pan the, the effects of the pandemic and what should we do, what, do you, what I would say, what should we use our time to, to do to grow and use this time to grow? What should we be doing? Because we've had time now to be at home and do all this stuff. One, what do you think about the pandemic? And, and, you know, and secondly, how do you think best to navigate that? You know, I'm going to be a liar if I tell you I have a thought about pandemic. It is you people that have pandemic. We don't have pandemic in Africa. Honestly speaking, there is no pandemic in Africa. We are going about our daily business. Come home, come and enjoy the wealth and the health that the sun is giving to us. Those things don't survive here. We go about our business. We rarely even use face masks. So nothing has stopped. Life is as it used to be. We are not dying here. The other day they were saying, we are dying, we are dying, we are dying. In Kenya, they were burying this thing. We say, open the coffin. When they opened the coffin, it was an empty coffin. We know they die. Ebola came, we killed it. Did they not say we are the HIV cause? We are still living today. Let them manufacture anything. If they like, let them manufacture the smart, the smart dust that they will, we will still neutralize it. So I, I don't know if I'm going to give this, I'm going to be sounding like a modular speaker. It is people abroad that have pandemic. During the pandemic, look around very well and query your existence and all that you have been taught. All this while you have taught is the grace of God that is making you alive. Suddenly, God cannot take away the pandemic, locking you up anyhow, anyhow. <laughs> you know, in Africa, we were dragging with them in Ghana the other time. They, were, they think they are being transparent and making sense. They say so far so good from COVID tests that they, are, they have realized $17 million. That was around, they were talking about that around June. So we said, he said that you reduce the COVID test or we are not doing anymore. What kind of nonsense is that? How will you be ripping us up of whatever? What is the meaning of this? So for people in UK, I know how inconvenient the government is trying to, you know, build yourself up. A lot of you are getting used to working remotely. A lot of you are getting used to looking inward yourself. Somehow you realize that you've not gone to church all this while, but you are still alive. Somehow you realize that you have not paid tight all this while, but you are still having money. That's a lie. That they told you that without paying tight, you will, cancer will eat you up. Somehow you realize that you didn't go to mosque all this while, but somehow, um, even though you call Allah, Jesus, uh, Yahweh, and all that, they could not take away pandemic. If anything is going to take away pandemic, it is common sense. This is not the first time we're having pandemic in life. Have you read about Black Death? When it happens, that was not the first time people use facial masks. Do not let all these religious people come up with so many conspiracy theory and all that. Am I denying the fact that there is such a thing as called bioterrorism? I'm not denying it. People can use biological weapons to terrorize one another. We have even been terrorizing each other all this while. Some of you, when you fart, it is a biological weapon on its own. All the insects in your house will just die. So let's not just tell. Uh, let's not, uh, you know, make it so look inward yourself and be the best of yourself. And if you have Thank nothing you. to do, go to my YouTube and listen to all my YouTube channel. By the time it's over, you'll be a new person. They will think you are mad, but you have discovered who you are. 
Absolutely, Baba. Um, I, I'm an avid subscriber, so he that is very, very true. You will definitely learn a lot. Um, yes, um, Nigel, your question. Yeah, no, I found that response very um, informative, but also amusing as well, because I, I just traveled, right? And I had to pay so much for COVID tests and all this. So for me, it's uh, a lot to do with economics more so. So um, I, I do concur. Um, <clears throat> but my question is going back to male and female relationships in particular, and we understand how culture is transmitted, right? So culture coming through uh, external influences like social media, the media, and so forth and so forth. So when you want to find, say, a partner or friends or colleagues who share in the authentic African culture, the cultural principles you want to embody and practice, how can you best support them to see the dangers of the culture that they're inheriting and adopting? That's my question. Thank you, uh, Stuart. The problem is here, and that is the fact that you think or we think that we are people's savior when we are not. People don't change because we want them to. They change because they see reason to change. The highest you can do is to keep living your truth and shining your light. As a matter of fact, most times, the reason why we need to now explain to people why they should believe in what we believe in is because we are not living our truth and that thing that we believe in. Or maybe what we believe in is even junk. For if what you hold is truly light, you would not need to evangelize illumination to others. They naturally just flow towards you, come towards you, and all of those things. Now, it is true that those who are awake should wake others up. But are we doing it in an invasive manner? We should do it as if we are speaking our truth. Now, we should not approach people with the mindset of wanting to win their soul. We are not a soul winner. We are not the crusaders. We are not the mujahideen. We are just who we are, living our truth people will naturally flow towards us. And by the end of the day, you realize that your lifestyle preach more of your conviction than the words that come out of your mouth. So having a partner, naturally, the moment a man discover who he is, who he is determine what he eats. You can't eat any half the moment you know who you are. There are some food that naturally just dull your spiritual sensitivity. It is you that knows what you are after. Who you are determines the way you dress. Where you go to people that you mingle with. It is in this society that you are drawing towards or moving towards that you will find someone who thinks like you are thinking. But in the case whereby you have married this person before embracing this way of life, the best bet is just to allow them also grow at their own pace. Else we will, we will brew conflict and we will do more harm than good. The best is for us to just allow people grow at their own pace. There's a point, there was a point in my life when if you tell me that something is wrong with Jesus, I would nearly want to kill you. That was the face I was in. And I'm really happy nobody came to tell me something is wrong with Jesus. I knew not only that something is wrong with Jesus, I knew by myself that Jesus is wrong. So it was, I, I, was, I, I grew at my own pace. I grew at my own pace. Let us allow people freedom to grow at their own pace. It doesn't matter if they are our spouse, our children, whatever it may be. As a matter of fact, I have a lot of friends who are homosexual because I think I am the only African spiritualist that doesn't condemn the uh, LGBT. L LGBTQ community. Because if you have chosen to be that, I don't have right over you. It's like my friend who is drinking alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. No matter how enticing or how expensive it is, if I visit you, you offer me alcohol, you have just wasted a bottle. I will not drink it. Mm -hmm. But I have friends who drink alcohol. I have friends who, who smoke. I will not say they are condemned as a human. 
for choosing that way of life. Everybody will face the consequences of their, of their choice. The same way I relate with the, with the people of other sexuality that is different from me also. And I allow them to grow at their own pace. And if you hold an opposing opinion to me, the thing is, the only problem we have is when you come to inform me. Just choose your way. Let me choose my own way. The sky is big enough for us to fly. People will get to the truth. You don't worry about it. Just keep being truthful to yourself. Your light will shine on them and you won't need to advertise your illumination. Yeah. That's what I have to say. Can I, can I add a, um, a, a follow-up question on that then? Yeah. Um, and it might sound like a silly question, but when you're talking about who someone is, because that's my philosophy also, and what you should really do if you're a friend or a colleague is just explain to someone the power of finding who they are. But a lot of people, they don't know how to understand what that means. They don't understand how to ask that question of themselves, right? So, and I find, personally find it very difficult to explain to someone how to question who they are. What does it mean who? I can say what from a biological perspective, but when we say who, that moves into all types of subjectivity. So what advice would you give in us advising people to find out who they are and go on that journey? Um, the question is pretty much um, something that you normally hear a, a diplomatic answer to. <laughs> what works for me will surely be different from what works for you. The inability of mankind to take interest in the minute detail is the reason why we find that particular question very hard to answer within ourselves. The particular detail, very minute one, because the very little things is what make us up. Now, for instance, I'm a man who likes his solitary. Is this solitary or solitude? Quietness and all that. I revert back to it every now and then. Now look at it. You all have been hearing me talking for over an hour now. You will say I'm outspoken as a person. And sometimes when I'm teaching also, you would also say I have sense of humor. I am the driest human being you will ever meet. When you meet me in real person, this is how I'll be looking at you. If you don't talk, I will not talk. And if I give you 15 minutes and you don't say something that is interesting, I'm gone into my room. I will tell them, take care of my visitor, I'm gone. I don't have time to waste. <laughs> now, I would have actually denied myself because I'm a public figure, so to say, and wanting to be there for everyone, to, jo to be jovial with everyone, to play with everyone and all that. And I will end up being depressed. But because I knew this is who I am, this is where I get my strength from. In the darkness you don't want to go to, that's where I get the inspiration I share in the light. For I refuse to joke with my darkness. I refuse to joke with my solitude. Now, you will want to have... I know this now. This also because I know this. I did not also get married again. Because I know women, they want attention. They want them to be there. They want you to be there for them. They, if you don't want to talk, they want to talk. They want to say something. Not because they are parrot, but that's one of the way they show their emotion and all that. I also say, okay, this is not going to work for me. So I decided to say, okay, I'm going to stay by myself. Now it took years, more than 40 years of me getting to that point where I took note of the minute detail that contribute to my happiness. One time or the other, I have tried to shoot beyond what I'm capable of be there for people, attend party also, talk when they talk endlessly and all that. And I realized at the end of the event or activity, I'm drained. So I saw, okay, this is what works for me. I'm not going to know how you are going to figure yourself out, but figuring who you are, I'll start from telling yourself the truth. Tell yourself the truth. How did I feel when I did this compared to how I felt when I did that? The one that brings about pleasant surprise, a pleasant feeling, that's who you are. That's very much who you are. People are in a field they should not be because their friends are there. 
the culture of uniformity has rendered us all useless. People, want, people are doing that is what is winning. I know many people who have no business with IT, but because IT is what is paying. So they go into IT when they are just a novelist. They are supposed to be a publisher. So test all things. In the midst of testing all things, the ones that give you pleasant feelings within you, that especially when you do it, you don't mind if you are paid for it or not. You are just like a gun trigger, ready to shoot. That's who you are. That's what works for you. So I think that's how I will examine, uh, I will, I will answer you. that particular question. Thank you. Uh, we got last last two questions for today's session. Um, Odeleye, I want to let you ask your question, and then I'm going to add the second question so you can answer both one after the other. Okay? Um, is that am I pronouncing right? Odeleye, um, would you like yeah, to it's, yourself and ask your question, please? Yes, it's um, Miss Happy. Um, I just wanted to um, thank uh, Baba Yoruba for um, everything you shared with us, and and to um, uh, ask about what you were saying um, about women, um, because the issues around, you know, our roles in African spirituality, how, you know, um, there are some who say that we cannot or should not be Yanifa, you know, um, um, for example, or that our roles are limited, in, you know, to maybe just being a sort of priest or priestess of uh, one of the deities. What is your view about our roles in African spirituality and how can we reclaim those? Brilliant question. Right, thank brilliant question. Okay. Brilliant question. So yes. Um. So in fact, the, the last question is in line with that as well, which is basically, again, uh, yes, we want to know the roles of um, Af um African women back in spirituality, but also the other question was about um where we are now. If what's your view on patriarchy? Is it African or is it not? So those are the two questions. Okay. Thank you. No Let me answer the first, uh, the, the last one, so I don't forget. Um, is is a patriarchal system, an African system? Does it originate from Africa? No, it is not. Have you been to Ghana before? If you've been to Ghana before and ask about the culture of Ghana people, you realize that Ghana is a is a is a woman country. It is, a woman, it is a woman that matters in Ghana. And not only in Ghana, you must have read about the, the, the Ankh before, the Ankh, the symbol of Ankh before from the hotel court. And you realize that there is no pharaoh or leader that goes out without paying tribute to the women by holding the Ankh in their most important hand. Uh, that is to show you how much women take uh, preeminence because there will not be Africa without women. There, if there's no one to give back to us, to carry us, to nurture us, to incubate us, will there be humanity? And then the, do you know specifically they refer to Africa as a motherland for a reason? Hmm? You can say your country is a fatherland, but your continent, which is Africa, is a motherland for a reason. Here in Africa, here in the Western Africa, Yoruba people also, there is a word we say, we say Yanewura, Babani Digi. The literal meaning is that is that our mothers are good. They are treasures. Our, our fathers are just mirror. They are reflection. That's the order of importance. So the matriarch society is, um, is an African culture. It was the invasion that brought patriarchy, society, patriarchy into our society. And because it pays these men, they will do everything to defend it. I don't have problem. Personally, I don't have problem about my, my spouse taking decision or living today peak of our career. For a bitter woman, we mess your life up. Sometimes you think you give her money, you give her this, this and she's still bitter somehow. If, she's, if, she, if she sacrificed her own vision and dream 
to raise a home for you, I tell you, you still not enjoy that home. It does not matter. It, she might be smiling, but there's this resentment that comes from them towards you sometimes. And that's the resentment of, so I used my life to serve this one. No thanks to religion. From Genesis to Revelation, women are to die. Women are to be tormented. Women are to be do, do this and that. In Islam also, even till date, you go to mosque before? Is Islam a African religion? Do you see the segregation? The women cannot be seen openly. Have you ever seen a female woman, a female human leading prayer for Islam before? Was it, the, was it the same God that created them and the Muslim and the men or different? You see how they treat them during their menstrual cycle in Judaism and also in Islam? Have you seen the way? It was not women that born. It was not witches that was born. Check your Bible very well. Go and read the original. It was not witches that was born. It was women that born in those days. If you are as beautiful as having a red hair in the community of black hair people, they born you. If you are as courageous as are spoken in your community where men have the authority, they born you. If you are as much as come alive with a blue eye instead of a black eye or a brown eye, like the general community, they born you. Ask the Greek how they treated their women. At the time, Unwa uh, Yerua uh, uh, of the Eastern Nigeria and Fumilayo Ransom Kuti of the Southwest Nigeria were disrupting the activity of the British colonial masters and resisting them. What right do women in Europe have with their men? Do you know how women in Europe now began to gain power? They practically went to war with their spouses to be where they are today. In every community, and we have a, a palace or a king, we can have 70 chiefs who are males and just one woman who is a female. If all the 70 say yes, and that one woman say no, they do not burn anybody well to say yes again. That is how powerful these women are. We call them witches because they have a different level of sensitivity and signaling and antenna beyond you men. And so you think you keep secret, but you can look into your eyes and tell you what you are up to. And they demonize them and do all sorts. That was not what African people were doing. When I was getting inducted, or let me, no, when I was getting initiated into the order of Ifa to be a full fledged Babalawu, it was a woman who did my initiation. And that was a cousin of mine, not a man. And I was counted the most lucky man amongst all men to have a woman administer that to me. I don't disrespect them. They know me. Some of them are here. When I want to venerate them, I remove my car. Those are the ones that are due to it. I know how much powerful they are. So if you had told me that heaven is women, I would say I want to go there. And if you had told me that hell is a woman, I will also be scared of it. You want to describe this and that, and you don't describe it in form of the duality of a woman's nature, I don't believe you because they are the whole eternity and entirety of the universe. So talking about being a Yanifa and all of those things, your intention matters. Your intention matters. I'm not a fan of title. I know a lot of people are embracing African spirituality because they want to gain title. So you hear a uh, traditional apostle, evangelist, general overseer of all the spirituality. What, what do you need those titles? Why do you want to be Yanifa? Why do you want to be Babalawu? Don't you have a name? What happened to your name? People often say, oh, you don't say you are Babalawu, you say you are Baba Yoba. Baba Yoba is a nickname, not my real name. My name is Mr. Ayilara Oluwashew. But I love my language very much, which is Yoruba language. And I do voiceover acting for that language. And in our voiceover booths and academy and all that, they, they give me the nickname Baba Yoba. But I practice the, the spirituality of my ancestors, and you can call me Babalawu, but I will not introduce myself to you as one. You will figure it out by the way I live, by the words I say, by the things you encounter with me. You will figure who I am with you out. 
To some people, I'm just a farmer because the reflection of me they see is the farming reflection. To some children, I'm just a, an adopted father. To some people, I'm just a humanitarian. To some, I'm a babalawu. To some, I'm just a friend. To my mother, I'm a son. To my sister, I'm a brother. I am who I am to you based on our relationship together. I will not introduce myself to you with so many titles. So we need to check the intention of these people who want to be Yalurisha, Yanifai, Yadis. Who are you trying to scare? What is the essence of the title? What is your motive of taking it up? Okay, you know how to manipulate nature. You know how to understand nature. Know it and use it for yourself. Is that an enterprise? Is that a profession? Is that even supposed to be a career? If you can't teach other people what you know, why are you trying to, who are you trying to mesmerize? Before we turn it into a religion where we have to be befitted be or be given titles upon titles. That's the only thing I have against that. There is nothing in African spirituality that says women cannot practice it or know it better. As a matter of fact, in rounding up Joseph, whatever rite, whatever ritual, whatever sacrifice, whatever communication we want to have with nature, it is an aberration for us to say it has been accepted if a woman did not give a final decree. So in every sacrifice and rite, a woman's authority, a woman's decree is the most important part of all of those rites. And we don't underestimate them. Thank you.